Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to share a quick unboxing and first look at the MSI X Slim RTX 4090. Now, this was launched, announced roughly a month ago, and it retails for $1,699 US dollars. I purchased mine from Best Buy, I'll include a link in the description. And for those of you wondering what makes this a new and improved card, it's really simple. Of course, in the name, it's now slimmed down, so it's not going to occupy as much space in your brand new build or your existing system uh, that you're looking to upgrade. And then in addition to that, if like me, you wish NVIDIA hadn't eliminated all of uh, the HDMI ports, aka limiting us to a single port, this GPU brings one back. So we've got two HDMI 2.1 ports as well as two display ports. So a more flexible card in just about every sense. And, you know, I had told myself uh, that I was going to wait for the uh, 4090 Ti, but I just got the uh, Samsung uh, Odyssey Neo 57-inch mini LED ultra wide. And well, for any of you that know, uh, that's pushing nearly 8K resolution, 240 hertz. So to have a, a beefy GPU like a 4090 is not required, but if you want to get the most out of that product today in 2023, then a 4090 is a good way to go. So I decided to jump on it. Hopefully this is gonna be the card uh, that will drive it perfectly for me. If I end up doing a new build, of course it will uh, be on the channel. But as of right now, I think I'm gonna put this in an existing build uh, because after all, that's another nice thing about this card. Slimmer, uh, and that just means that older systems, as long as you have you know, the power supply to back it up, which in my opinion is at least a thousand watts, although I think uh, this card calls for a minimum of 850. Um, I still think this is the way to go. And again, for anyone wondering, this is all about gaming in 4K, or in my case, you know, 7K, um, which still is not, this card still can't really deliver uh, full performance from that Odyssey Neo uh, 57 inch, but it is very, very close. And again, the best experience you're going to get in 2023, no question about it. And MSI is a great manufacturer. I mean, there are a lot of different options on the market. I generally stick with Founders Edition cards simply because I just trust that NVIDIA is generally going to produce, even though they don't literally manufacture them, the best cards that money can buy. So this is one thing that you're going to get with uh, this card is a bracket, which I think is required here in 2023. Um, power cables. So... For any of you that are wondering, going to put that aside and let's take a look at this GPU because after all, it is a monster. And you know, I really didn't think that I was eventually ever going to pick up a 4090. As many of you know, Nvidia, you know, didn't didn't help their reputation this year um, with raising prices. A lot of people felt that they exploited a market that, well, they already own. And I totally understand why. No one has to make that argument with me. Uh, but let's face facts: Nvidia is still uh, the GPU manufacturer to beat, and very soon they may be the processor manufacturer to beat as they enter uh, the CPU market, which, if you didn't know, they're getting ready. Um, or they already have begun, is what I should say. So here is this monster that you can pick up in white as well. A um, little bit of uh, MSI bling there. And it's a big one, but this looks a lot more like a 4080 than a 4090, and that's the beauty of of this card. The other big deal, as I've already mentioned, are the ports because we do actually have, as I already stated, two HDMI 2.1s and two DisplayPort 1.4s. Um, of course, for my monitor that I mentioned, I really need, you know, the next generation of DisplayPort because that's just a, a limitation of what we have here in 2023, which reminds me of a lot, a lot of uh, when uh, the previous generation not the 3000 series, but the 2000 series was not ready for HDMI 2.1. So we had to wait for, obviously, the 3000 series cards to get that support. We're going to be waiting for the 5000 series for true support of that monitor. But again, already with the 4080 on the, uh, the Odyssey Neo 57, I am able to game at nearly 8K, 120 hertz with, you know, high or ultra settings, depending on a game, on the game in question. This, though, is going to be able... Uh, as I've stated, to give me everything uh, that I was looking for. And I think it's a nice looking card. I mean, again, Founders Edition cards to me have the best aesthetic, blend of performance and pricing. Uh, this one only being $100 more than the Founders Edition, but having, in my opinion, what should be better performance. It should be cooler. 
uh, hopefully no coil whine and better port, you know, port selection, uh, an array of ports that is preferable. I think this goes in a direction that everybody is going to want. So that's why I shared it. Um, had it been available in, in the white color, I probably <clears throat> would have gone with white, but of course uh, that wasn't available. So here it is. Any questions or comments, please feel free to post them, hit that like button. And as usual, please feel free to subscribe and please stay safe. Later.